Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, Pastor. Father John Broby, Associate Pastor. Good morning, everyone. We begin this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart. We pause a moment to prepare ourselves for our celebration, recognizing times when our hearts are not quite the way they should be. We call to mind our sins to ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And we praise our God this morning as we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Come, we pray, grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your, your honored Son, your beloved Son, and recall the wonders of his love for us, may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from the fount of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, took them to my, in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed, my pity is stirred, I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, and the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You You will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from from the springs springs of of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You You will will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from from the springs springs of of salvation. salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You You will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from from the springs springs of salvation. salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will will draw draw water water joyfully joyfully from from the springs springs of salvation. salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, to me, the very least of all the Holy Ones, This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery 
hidden from ages past in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in heaven. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God first loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since it was the preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath of that day was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other, who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled, not a bone of his shall be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. The Gospel of the Lord. On this Feast of Sacred Heart, there seems to be a, a fairly good progression in the readings. Gospel from John shows the crucifixion of Jesus and his dying upon the cross. The passage in particular shows how he has already died, and they are surprised that this has already happened. And so even though they want to take the bodies down before the feast day of the Passover, they come and see that the two thieves that he is being crucified with their legs are broken, so they'll die quickly. And Jesus has already passed, and so they pierce his side, it says. And the assumption, of course, is the soldier's lance goes through the heart. So all of that's happened, the piercing of Jesus' heart, his death. Why? So that we could know the love of God for us. I find that passage from the Paul's letter to the Ephesians, in particular, the latter part of that reading, really fascinating. It's just, a, just an incredibly powerful particular reading. Whenever you come to the feast days like this Sacred Heart Feast, you, you look around in the readings for references to the heart. And you find it in this reading, toward the end, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and have the strength to comprehend with all the holy ones 
the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of the love of Christ for each of us. Go back to that scene in the gospel. Jesus willing to die for us so that we can know what the love of God for us is and how incredibly awesome that truly is. That whole reading really pushes that whole idea so that we can know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge and we can be filled with the fullness of God. To have the fullness of God in me and in you, that's the whole point of Jesus dying on the cross so that we can have the fullness of God's love within us. And if we pause very long with this particular passage from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, might even be a little bit overwhelmed. What are we supposed to do? Well, if God loves us this much, if Jesus was willing to die on the cross for us, to have his heart pierced for us so that we could know God's love, then we are to love like Jesus did. That's our challenge today on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, not only to appreciate and to respond to that love of God in our thoughts, but more so in our actions and how we step forward to love those who are part of our life who come into our lives day by day, family, friends, people we work with, people we don't know, how are we going to do the next loving thing for them? Our challenge today, respond to the love of God that has come to us through the sacred heart of Jesus. Let's pause for a moment's reflection. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us present to him our prayers and petitions for the church and for the, for the world. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire the hearts of the faithful with the spirit of evangelism and missionary zeal, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, that the Lord bring about an end to conflict and violence, we pray to the Lord. For children who have been abandoned or orphaned, may Christ shower his love upon them and lead them to loving surroundings, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here at this liturgy, may the grace of the Eucharist help us to be in becoming more understanding and forgiving toward one another, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, May our Savior turn his merciful grace upon them and grant them a place at his eternal banquet. And we pray in particular today, if I could find it, for Teresa Scanlon, we pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear our prayers and answer them in accordance with your divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, we pray on the, the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you, and an expiation for our offenses, through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments. On that, one over to the open heart of a Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these offerings which we pray by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Francis, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. On this Feast of Sacred Heart, we want to remember in our prayers all those discerning their vocations in life, especially those discerning priesthood and God's created religious life. Let's say together the Sarah prayer. <coughs> God, our Father, today may I have an opportunity by my actions to encourage a vocation to the religious life. Help me to conduct myself in a Christian manner that I might give proper example, particularly to the young. Through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, may I also support those in religious life in their vocation of service to your church. May the sincerity of my prayers and my concern for vocations result in an increase of laborers for Jesus and his church. Amen. May the sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of your holy love, so that drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.